It's basically done at this point. I mean, aside from just a few minor graphical things like the uh, the menu system and I mean the GUIs and things like that, and a couple of you know tunes and sound effects, uh, it's been in beta for a while, so it basically is finished. Um, so yeah, I think that February March is a very realistic goal. Yeah, well, the biggest challenge in making this game was learning to let go of complete creative control and work on a team because, I mean, I've always been used to working on my own games and stuff. So this time around, I only did the writing and the design. So, you know, I had to learn communication and effective communication. And um, that, was a, that was a pretty big challenge. But luckily, I, you know, I learned a lot. And um, I, you know, I, I, I learned a lot and came away the better for it. So... No, not really. Shardlight doesn't have any puzzles that are that have any sort of unique mechanic. Um, I would say that Shardlight has some puzzles that I've never done in games before. Like you saw in the demo, there was the bit where you have to rub the paper. There's another puzzle that involves drawing something. Um, so they're not mechanically they're not unique. It's pretty standard, uh, just point and click. Um, but there's a couple of puzzles that are out of the ordinary for what I've done before. If that makes any sense. <laughs> So that's something I've always struggled with. Um, I always find that when I design games on paper, I always feel like they're going to be really, really long. But then when they end up, be, you know, when I actually end up building them, they they tend to be a little bit on the shorter side. But uh, I definitely think Charlotte is a lot longer than a Golden Wake. Um, I mean, if a Golden Wake was five hours, maybe on the first playthrough, I would say Shardlight will probably be more like eight to ten. Um, it's it, it's not divided into chapters like a Golden Wake was. It just the story just kind of progresses, but internally it's divided into three acts. And like you know, the first act takes maybe like three hours. The second one takes about the same, and the third one's a little bit shorter, but maybe like one or and a half or two. So I mean, playing right now, playing through it, knowing what to do, and just you know, doing only the necessary steps to solve all the puzzles. When I play test it, it takes me about three and a half to four hours. So. When I wrote the characters, actually, we had someone who came in and helped me figure that out a little bit. Um, basically, I for each character, we did like a writing exercise to kind of figure out who these characters were. Like, you know, we asked questions like, you know, kind of weird questions like, would they be late for dinner? Or, um, you know, what's their favorite meal? Uh, what would their last meal be? Uh, you know, um, I'm, I can't remember the third one. But it was, it was kind of strange questions. But at the same time, when you thought about it, it really helped to develop the personality. And, you know, in writing them, you got to know them. And, you know, as a lot of people said, during the event, the more you know your characters, the easier it is to write for them, the more genuine they feel. Whereas with A Golden Wake, I mean, I had a lot of historical characters, so I didn't really develop their personalities necessarily beyond what I knew about them from researching them. Um, so this, you know, I had free reign to basically make up this whole cast of characters, and so I think that they have a lot more personality this time around. Sure, so that was part of the fun of creating the new, you know, creating a world from scratch is that, you know, we ha I had more freedom and creativity to kind of come up with a different look. So yes, the, the, the sort of, you know, I don't want to say evil villains because it's, we tried to be more sort of ambiguous uh, morality wise, but the government in the world of Shardlight, yes, they, they obviously they dress they look like, you know, 17th century French Revolution era. Uh, uh, that's the costumes they wear. Um, so that was, that was, yeah, that, it was cool to be able to do that. And yeah, just draw from a, an actual historical thing and sort of blend it into this world and kind of give it its own unique spin.
So, um, personally, I just really like fops. I like the whole thing of like you know powdered wigs and like ooh. But you know, we obviously we didn't go for a comedy thing in in Charlotte. I noticed it was funny when we first see Tiberius. A lot of people kind of laughed because he does look pretty weird, but. That's cool because when you first see him, you're like, what? And you might not take him seriously. But as you get to know the character and you see him more, you see like, oh, this actually is someone to take seriously. And he has his own reasons for, you know, dressing the way he does. And we kind of talk about that a little bit in the game. Not too much, but, you know, we, we kind of, it's, you know, it's, it's not just a random thing. Like, you know, um, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, I always say that it's Children of Men meets V for Vendetta meets The Hunger Games. Um, as far as games, Dishonored was a really big influence. Um, just, you know, because there's a lot of similarities there. Like, uh, I guess the whole thing about, like, the plague came from Dishonored and just the world of, you know, the sort of world in squalor and everything is very much like Children of Men. There's a character who we didn't, I haven't shown. He's kind of a mysterious character who plays a big part in the story, but it's kind of spoilery, which is why I haven't mentioned him too much, but that comes kind of from V for Vendetta. Um, so, yeah, basically that, those are the, ma the major influences. No, he... he pretty much came up with the visual style the the way that it kind of came to development is actually i wanted to do another historical game based on like the bl set during medieval times during the black plague um this was still while i was making a golden wake and i'll make this long story short but basically i told ben about the idea we kind of talked about it back and forth we were like hey we should make a game together and then in talking we came up with the idea for this world for you know for charlotte uh we came up kind of like with the concept for what the characters were going to look like I, I would do like the base sprites for what i wanted them to kind of look like he would you know do them in, in his own style and but as far as the backgrounds like you know i would do little placeholder sketches and stuff but i gave him a lot of freedom to you know com do the compositions and things as he saw them and you know the whole the whole idea of like the color palette the way it is like there's a lot of green and brown and then there's very little use of blue blue is used to denote like technology and the government he made that decision all on his own so he definitely had a lot of input on the visual style of it Well, in this case, because it's an in-house project, because, I mean, I'm, I'm writing and designing it, but I am now a, a full-time designer at Wajidai. So this project, you know, in, uh, as opposed to a Golden Wake, where I pretty much developed most of it, pitched it to Dave, you know, he played it, he, you know, he suggested changes and things. He's been a little bit more involved uh, this time around. <coughs> Excuse me. He's been a little bit more involved this time around uh, for longer. Um... And, you know, Dave will play the game and he'll make notes and he'll say, you know, this doesn't work, you know, change this, do something about this, etc. But, I mean, he pretty much just gives us freedom to, you know, make the game. And then when he plays it, he'll say, well, you know, this is something that's, that I noticed was done in another game that didn't work. I don't think this is something that works. And then, you know, make changes based on that. Kind of. I mean, I don't have any. I don't. I can't say anything concrete because I mentioned to you before that I've just started putting down ideas for my next project. But I do have a set idea in mind, and it's still very much in the formational stages. I'm, I'm doing. I'm basically just writing a whole bunch of ideas for world building. Um, the most I can say is that I want it to be. It's going to be a detective game. Um, it's going to be sort of like in, set in a sort of Victorian-esque era. It's not historical fiction because it's, in, it's set in an alternate universe type thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's too early to say anything concrete. But we'll see. Maybe next year I'll have more to say, more to, hopefully something to show. I don't know. Just that they should look for Shardlight in February or March of 2016 and, uh, you know, hopefully play it and I hope they like it.